Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are once again doing another story time, and I'm once again joined by the wonderful uh, Lucas, aka Love Cubs. How's it going, Lucas? Hey, it's good. How's it going? Good, going good, dude. Uh, what, what are we talking about today? A little, little bit of travel? A little bit of planes? A <laughs> little bit of planes, a little bit of travel. I believe both you and I have enough travel under our belts over the years that we can actually, you know talk about it a little bit i think so i've got some i got some funny funny uh airport stories and stuff like that so i'd, I'd love to get into all that awesome <laughs> all right i'm just gonna uh, kind of run around my village you know what i'm gonna do today though on my on my wonderful world of of uh of Minecraft is i'm gonna secure my little village because i have a home and you don't nanner, nanner, nanner. yeah that's true i should have actually you know <laughs> let all of my meat cook while i was uh you know not online oh yeah i did some um. i did some material <laughs> collecting after our last episode there because i had to so, get bored anyway well, have you I, I haven't even played since our last episode so uh, you recently kind of... came back from a uh a, a long trip actually it that a... ended up n not the the greatest end result no. because of medical issues yeah it was supposed to be a lot longer and right it, it wasn't but it was a six-month trip to florida it's quite the long trip it was um I mean, our trip there, that's borderline we actually... moving <laughs> well we wanted to do six months in florida and then you we were going to do a year and a half in europe and i still would love right. to someday but uh, now, being a cancer patient, I don't get good insurance, so no, no one get, wants to insure somebody. Yeah, you get that crap insurance now, man. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably not going to be for a while. But, uh, yeah, so we drove down to Florida. That was a decent trek. I think we did it across three days, stayed at two hotels on the way. Uh, we could have done it in, like, one day if we really wanted to, but I don't like driving for that long. Yeah, that's a... Uh... What, about a 17-hour, 18-hour drive? Yeah, I think it was about 18 hours. But yeah. you do something very similar when you head up north, don't you? Uh, every, almost every year. Up until this last year, uh, since COVID started, we've been driving up to Washington to my mother-in-law's house, which is the same distance, roughly, from where you live to Florida, from where we live in California to the northernmost part of, northwestern most part of Washington. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a 17 hour and some change drive it's 1130 <laughs> some miles for those of you that that are in the u.s for those of you that are in the that, that use the metric system i have no idea <laughs> a lot i, I can't convert it's, it at all it's, i don't it's know not, the conversion yeah yeah I, I don't know what it is either it's, it's a lot of a lot of distance it's, it's a long time i just go by time yeah <laughs> but uh this last year we flew and oh my goodness it was such a freaking joy to not uh to well, not you drive flew because maybe you had car problems in the past oh so if you want to talk that game okay so <laughs> the very uh the first summer we went up um we didn't have any issues the second summer we decided we're gonna take our truck and our boat and we're gonna drive them up and then drive them back so we're gonna take our boat on vacation with us because you know that's what you do take your yes. boat on a 1100 plus mile journey so we <laughs> drove up and it was just wonderful and uh it was worry free <laughs> we make it yeah make it all the way there we do all of our uh our wonderful trip stuff you know uh doing our uh hold on a second i'm trying to make material here and i'm screwing <laughs> myself up um doing all of our wonderful trip stuff we go out on the lakes we do all that stuff with a boat and we finish our vacation we're th there for two and a half almost three weeks right yeah cool time to come home because we're we're over it and it was like one of the hottest summers we've ever experienced up in washington we used to live up there by the way so uh on our uh, on our journey back we decided we're gonna you know, we're gonna take the little back road there and about an hour and a half out from my mother-in-law's house uh we lose all power on the truck <laughs> oh, no. it was such a good time uh, such a good time is this little two-lane highway I mean, in the it's like hugging a lake. So there's nothing on the left because it's the lake, and there's the hill on the right. So there's nothing on the right. Luckily, we had a break in the road, and we were able to coast in front of this random restaurant in the middle of BFE, right? Okay. And uh, this restaurant uh, was kind of our safe haven for uh, a whopping twelve hours while we waited for <laughs> roadside assistance to come and eventually help us out and what they wouldn't do is tow the boat because our roadside assistance only covers the vehicle which Seriously? i understand yeah which i get it we, we didn't pay for that extra coverage i guess you know yeah uh so we have to either pay to have the boat hauled which is at this point i think we're a hundred just about 100 miles uh from my mother-in-law's house and that was going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of like 400 bucks something dumb so we called up some friends that lived in her town they came all the way out they picked up uh, my wife and kids, 
<laughs> and the boat. They had a they had a tow hitch. They were able to pick up the boat <laughs> and uh, take those all back to my mother in law's house. I waited for the tow truck, which took another three hours to get oh my there. Gosh! By the time the guy got there, uh, he locks up the the car, puts a car on a flatbed, and as we're heading back, like like, like I said, it's an hour and a half, right? It's it's, it's a good distance. Yeah. Um, he decides he needs a break, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay. So we pull over at this casino. I'm thinking he's gonna go gamble. I'm okay. like almost like a little little upset, but he just. Well, you've go- been waiting for twelve hours for for him already. Yeah, exactly. And then it turns out he just wanted to stretch his legs, but he stretches his legs for like thirty minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, I'm I want to go. Let's I'm go, all, dude. Dude, I just want to get back to our location. Oh, this gosh. is just torture, man. So we finally make it back, and we call up a couple shops, and we determine it's the transmission. That's what we figured out. It was a transmission that was that had something went wrong with it. So we, we call up a local shop, and the local shop says, yep, sure enough, it is your transmission. It is entirely blown. It's from. Oh no! What did um, you do to this thing? Exactly. Well, it's it's. I mean, it's it's an American-made truck, and it's uh, it's it's fairly American old. muscle. It's a American Hummer. American muscle. Yeah, it's a Hummer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thing was, thing was on its last leg anyway. So we figured, okay, this, we were planning on getting a new vehicle, but not this time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we end up getting uh, the truck sent into this this mechanic spot. And it's a transmission shop. They're like, okay, it's going to be three and a half weeks. Gosh. Because they can pull it out, but I guess to rebuild that transmission, it needs to go to a specialist or some crap. I don't know. At what point, why don't you just like go to a junkyard, get a used transmission and put that in? Because there's, we're in the middle of nowhere. There is no junkyard. Ah, yeah. I mean, I, had we been in California? Yeah, no problem. There's like there's like five like near my house like with, <laughs> within, uh, you know, a, 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 an Uber ride over. If I really right. wanted to, but because of where it was located, not a chance and holy, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we end up, Oh my goodness. I'm laying sand instead of sandstone. <laughs> Freaking idiot. Uh, so we end up leaving the truck there. Okay. So what are we going to do? We look at, uh, different options, rent a car. No, it was expensive at the time. It was because of COVID, uh, car rentals were, it was something in the, in the, uh, neighborhood of like $1,300 to rent this thing just to get us home. <laughs> because it needed to be a truck to have a tow hitch to take the, the boat right, home, right. right? And we're like, okay, that's that's stupid. That'd be a waste of freaking actual money. So we decide, well, we've been wanting to buy a car. Why don't we buy a car? So, the, you know, that's what you do normally. You just buy a car. <laughs> so we, we ended up buying uh, this Subaru that we have now. <laughs> While you were there. While we're there. We, we end up, so <laughs> b- again, because of COVID, no cars were available, right? Remember that shortage of computer yeah, chips, yeah. all that good crap? Well, uh no one had vehicles available except for this one dealership that was a hundred and I don't know what it was like 150 miles from the house. And they were so, I mean, I will recommend them to the, till I'm blue in the face. The place is called <laughs> Puyallup Subaru in Washington it is the, the greatest freaking Subaru dealership I have ever visited in Shout my out life. To this dealership Absolutely. Freaking lootly, man. Oh my God. These guys, not only did they give us a deal, like a discount on the vehicle, they put on a free trailer hitch. They put on free roof racks and, and they drove the car to us. Oh, I did the awesome. entire deal over the phone, and uh, they drove the car to us like three hours later. Wow, that's it was awesome! Nuts. So yeah, we went. We so we ended up going. That took about a week to get that all situated to find a dealership <laughs> that was actually not going to rip us off for you know. So your ten- vacation was an extra week long. Extra week long and an extra, uh, you know, huge chunk of change spent on a vehicle I wasn't planning on buying. <laughs> no, no doubt. <laughs> So, so yeah, uh, well, that's, that's a great vacation. It was a great time. <laughs> so it continues though. Yeah. So the following year we decide, okay, we have the Hummer back now because you know, it's fixed. We have the transmission fix in it. My mother-in-law drives it all the way down from Washington to us. And we have our Hummer back and we decide we're going to take another trip up to Washington. This, the following summer, the, the Hummer has a total of the 1100 miles it drove to drive it down. Plus 200 miles I had put on it. Right. So that's it. That's all it has on this brand new transmission. We drive about two hours from our house up north, and the transmission blows again. No. In the middle of the desert. In the middle of... <laughs> luckily, there was like a gas station and stuff we were able to pull over. We lost first and second gear entirely. So I could drive in third and in reverse, and that's it. <laughs> that was nuts. Are you like overdriving this thing? No, man, I'm not. It's And it's, <laughs> it's intended to, to haul a decent amount of a, a load, so it was... Right. A bit 
frustrating. So anyway, yeah, yeah. so we ended up getting the, the our my brother in law comes out and takes the, my family home, and uh, I wait and they and he hauls the uh, the boat home for me because he tra- he takes the Subaru he picks up my Subaru from my house takes that all back for me and I wait again for a tow truck driver to come and pick up the Hummer which only took another thirty minutes from this time it, it took a whopping total of two hours because we weren't in the middle of nowhere <laughs> this time around. And uh, so we get the the, boat, the 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 Hummer home, and we end up taking the Subaru with the boat to Washington, and everything was fine and dandy because you know Subaru's new. <laughs> so yeah, wow, that's quite the trip. But now the uh, Hummer stays in Washington. Now the Hummer stays in Washington specifically just to pull the boat, and no <laughs> and you other guys reason. Fly there, and we fly there because nice. Hell no, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> And you're not just like storing it in some parking lot somewhere. You got family there. So. Yeah, yeah. We have a, our my mother in law lives up there. We built a um, a lean to like this nice steel shed thing on the side of the house. We put the boat and the Hummer underneath that. Nice. Yeah. So it just sits there all winterized until the next time we go, which is next <laughs> summer. So now you don't have to worry about you know driving thousands of miles anymore. Yeah, exactly. So if we can help it, we're not going to drive up there. Right now, flying is its own challenges. I absolutely hate flying. But so <laughs> go on. So you ended up flying back or driving back when you were up in when you were down in so Florida. I had my procedure done and yeah. I was willing to wait till I healed up and I was gonna drive home with Evelyn. Yeah. But my family, my in laws, they're all like, You need to be home now, you need to get to see the cancer clinic, you need to be seen by people. I'm like really able to, but I guess I can try. So then my parents ended up buying me tickets, like airplane tickets to come home. Oh, wow. So after about a week of me being healed-ish, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself healed. I had to fly home. So oh, wow. everyone drops me off at the airport and I'm there with a still fresh incision. I can barely walk and I have to walk through this huge airport. Jacksonville airport is actually Jacksonville's not fairly big but we had a layover in detroit okay and it's a huge airport i believe it's detroit it's one that has like an actual subway system oh is that the, the, the twin cities air twin cities uh <laughs> airport maybe i think i don't i don't know the names i don't i don't fly through there very yeah, often right but i used to when i was working in uh, south carolina i had to fly through quite a bit but uh that doesn't really matter i had to Get off the plane, and yeah. then I had to try to rush. I, I had a 20-minute layover, so I had to try to rush to the opposite side of the airport. That's always a good I time. get there, and I am sweating like crazy. <laughs> I'm in so much pain. I just want to get on. It was the most uncomfortable flight of my life. I am not the smallest person ever, so when you're sitting in a bucket seat, it's it's not great, especially when you're sharing with other people. Oh, right. When Evan and I fly together, we sit next to each other, and she's very right. small, so we lift the armrest up. And I get to invade her space a little bit. Right, but you're a little more comfortable. Yes, but there, not so much. And I absolutely hate flying for those reasons. <laughs> I don't doubt it, man. Uh, that sounds torturous. Yeah, it was not fun. But um, yeah, I ended up getting home, and that was great. We got treated. It's good now. That's but, good. Um, <laughs> I uh, have seen, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it, but I've seen like pictures of double-decker airplane seating. Yeah. Where there's have you two, seen that? like two floors of, yeah. of airplane? Sort of. No, no, no. They're like, uh, how do I want to say this? It's like, like like California Adventure type of thing where there's like a level of people hanging above you? Kind of, yeah. So what? basically, so picture you sitting down in your seat and yeah. then there's a seat kind of, you could push your head forward a foot and hit your head on the back of their seat. What? So they have like a little platform. That sits them up like, I don't know, two feet above you, but they're like yeah. above your waist. Okay. But you have a lot more leg room than what you would normally have. And they can recline back and they'll hang over your head. Would this like, be like an international flight? Because it sounds like a big plane. Well, it would have to be a big plane. Like people are talking about like it's going to be the new alternative, but it's only going to be for huge planes, right? It'd have to be. I mean, it, but, the, the plane would have to be not only wide, but tall. Right. Exactly. So it have to be like at least nine, ten feet tall, I think. Right, like a like a seven forty seven, something along those lines. Right, and that's just like the inner cabin. But right, people are. I've seen so many complaints like, "Oh, the person in front of you or above you is going to fart, and it's just right in your face." <laughs> it's completely solid for one. So like, them oh. farting is the exact equivalent as them sitting next to you and farting. It makes zero difference whatsoever. Except you're going to get the particles right in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> through the three inch mm. thick plastic and chair and everything like that. Yes. So that that's kind of ridiculous. But then like the po- the positive is that there is so much more leg room and they can recline without hitting your knees. Oh, well that's kind of nice. Right? Like because the that's in a front of you. big that's probably the biggest freaking complaint, right? Yeah. Is the lack of leg cuz as years go on, the the they take away more and more leg room from us, you yeah. know? And, and it, it'd be kind of nice to have that back, honestly. <laughs> right, 100%. And then I've seen arguments about it like, oh, but it's so much more claustrophobic. And it's like, do you not sit in a car? Right. Like, when you sit in a car, you've got a roof that's literally two inches above your head. Well, you do because you're tall. Okay, well, four <laughs> inches above your head. <laughs> and this is like a sitting, if they recline, they're still a foot and a half above your head. Like That's true. I don't know. I, I I feel like anything that they can do to make flying more comfortable. Oh, I don't. I disagree. will happily take it. I don't disagree. Absolutely. I mean, anything that anything that that can be done, honestly, because flying, in all honesty, absolutely sucks. 100%. <laughs> I freaking, I mean, I don't enjoy. I mean, there's no aspect of it that's fun except for like maybe the initial like you know getting on the plane with the kids and stuff. They're like all you know excited to go somewhere. But once you sit down and you get situated, you're like. <laughs> Are we freaking there yet? I feel like well, I'm a, a five-year-old. I just, it, it sucks. Well, the whole experience sucks. Like, getting to the airport often three hours before your flight, and then you're like, okay, sometimes it's useful because, yeah, it's super busy, and you take an hour and a half to two hours to get through customs. Sure. But most times you're through with it in, like, half an hour, and then you have two and a half hours to kill. Right. Right? And that's just a waste of time. Oh, Absolutely. The, busyness and i don't know i hate sitting inside of airports it's just so oh i know the way so like, boring i mean most of the time we we time it pretty well but when we have gone where it's been like okay it's kind of hectic <laughs> you like want to you have to rush it along a little bit but for yeah. the most part we, we're always like ahead of time but you're right it's just it feels like you're just spinning spending your time in this airport when you could be doing something far better <laughs> with your life because it's it just so freaking boring exactly i mean I'll probably touch on this a bit more in a little bit later. But, yeah. Uh, I used to travel for work all the time. So I, I live in Ontario and I used yeah. to work in South Carolina Yeah. for a company for programming robots. Yeah. And I would have to, so I do two to three weeks in South Carolina and then I'd fly back and then I'd have two or three days home and then I'd have to fly back to South Carolina. Oh, wow. So I'd have an eight to 10 hour travel day. I mean, the flight itself was maybe half an hour and then i had a layover and then it was like an hour so like flight times is not bad but i'd have to leave for the airport four and a bit hours before my flight because you have to be there three hours early and it's an hour and a half from the airport from where i was living right so i'd leave at like seven in the morning get to the airport at like 8 30 and then i'm in the airport till 11 maybe 9 uh 10 30 11 o'clock and then i get on the plane and then you're on a plane waiting on the tarmac <laughs> for like half an hour. It's just the whole Maybe. day. Yeah. And then you're on the plane for half an hour and then I'm in Detroit and I have a three hour layover that I'm waiting for. Oh, geez. And then you finally leave Detroit and then you're in South Carolina and then you have to go through the whole airport there. And then you have to go get your rental car and then you have to drive to where you're staying. It's just like. It's the whole day. It is literally the whole day. The you cannot point. not spend your whole day at, at with travel, especially when you're going somewhere, even this two hour trip between us from us going to Washington, right? It's still your whole day, no matter what. Yeah. I mean, at best you get dinner <laughs> left over by the time if you, if you leave first thing <laughs> in the morning, that's about it. Yeah. So your seven day vacation is really a five day vacation, but two days of travel. Well, that's, that's the crazy part, right? Is like, we're planning this trip to, uh, to Japan and we yeah. keep looking at it like, okay, so we have to leave on this day in order to get the most out of your vacation because, you know, it's not a quick trip and you want to enjoy every last bit of it. You don't want to just show up and then go home because that's what happens if you go for a five-day vacation. You're going to have to take a seven or eight-day vacation in order to justify the flight time and all that other stuff. And that's just not enough time to do something right. like Japan because we've never been there. It's not like we've, we go regularly to know what it's like. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. So, I mean... Yeah. Go on. No, no, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, Japan is something that I really, really want to do. And it's not something that you can just experience in a couple days. Definitely not something you experience in a couple days. I know. I mean, I know people that, that do that, but it's for work. So work is different. Like when you go somewhere for work, you're, I know a lot of people have the intention, I'm going to visit this, that, and the other thing. But you really don't have time a lot no. of the time to do this, <laughs> that, or the other thing. You, you really have time for work, and then you want to get home. 
Hundred percent. Unless you have your significant other with you, if you have a significant other, then you can spend a little bit of time. That's cool, but not that's not always the case. No, exactly. And even when you do have your significant other, you just worked all day. You don't really want to be out after that doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Not really, because you're exhausted. You're free. You just finished freaking working. Exactly. But are you doing your uh, trip to Japan? Like Uh, we are planning for it. So we ended up setting it up for uh, when Ethan graduates. Okay. So which is year, this year? Th- which is this okay. year? Okay. Yeah. This this coming. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. This coming. Uh, um. What do you call it? May. Yeah. Yeah. May June because we have to wait for Liam to get out of school too. Okay. But uh, but yeah, that's uh. when, that's when we're planning on going. We'll see if it happens, but we're hoping so. Fingers crossed. Right. Hopefully, uh, flights and pricing comes down a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they haven't been, but yeah, hopefully. <laughs> uh, Again, been... fingers crossed. It's crazy the how expensive it even just. Oh, it's absolutely nuts. I I can't stand the 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 amount the actual just sheer cost of it is just nuts. <laughs> uh, um, have you ever have you ever? So we love security lines, right? Absolutely adore yes. them, right? They're the best thing on this planet. Oh, they're amazing. They're amazing, especially the American security lines. Oh, so, they're so, so efficient, so fast, so good, right? Best thing, <laughs> best thing since sliced bread. Um, have you ever shut one down? <laughs> shut one down. Shut one down. No. Have you ever put one on lockdown? <laughs> what did you do? Oh, I have. <laughs> a few times. <laughs> we got uh, pulled aside because they thought there was some bomb residue or something. Uh, it was Evelyn's Cliff Bar. Oh, but... <laughs> that's just that's just funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, the you know the material they use in the Cliff Bar is very similar <laughs> to that in TNT. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what did you do? So That's what I want to know. So you mentioned that you worked down South Carolina, right? Yeah. So I when I when we lived in Washington, I I worked in Burbank, which is where for the studios doing a, a prop building, right? Okay. So I would fly down for the week and fly home for the weekends, which sucked, but it is what it is, and you do what you got to do, right? right? So every week I would do that whole spiel of flying back and forth. Well, at one point my boss or boss's boss i can't remember who it was gave me these little you know what a, a rubber band gun is right yep okay so this one was really cool you can load like 10 rubber bands on it they're like little pistols about the size of your hand if you make it into the shape of a, a finger gun about that okay. size but they're wood they're clearly wood and you'd pull it and it would release one rubber band at a time so you it was like an, a semi-automatic fire of these how many ever 10 rubber bands or whatever it was rubber band yeah gun. gave me two of these to give to the kids right? Okay. They're brand freaking new. They're clearly a toy made from wood with the shape of wood cutouts all over this thing <laughs> and rubber bands physically installed on them ready yeah. to shoot rubber bands. I so can see where this is going, but they're yeah. in my backpack in my carry on. Cause I only carried a carry on because a check on was pointless. Cause I, I had my stuff at my place in Burbank and I had obviously stuff at home. So I didn't need to take too much back and forth with me. And I'm going through the the line from uh, Burbank Airport to SeaTac, and I'm in the only the only security line open. Because if you've ever been to Burbank Airport, I don't know if you have or haven't. It's really small. It's got two terminals, and they're very yeah. tiny. It's walk on tarmac. It's a very small. I love the airport. It's the best airport I've ever <laughs> ever been to in my entire life. Well, um, they saw the guns. They locked my bag in the freaking the what do you call it in the uh, oh. the security checkout little thing where it's. This yeah. does a scan of your bag and yep, yep. they locked the line and they called <laughs> the police, the local police, because they have a police department there at the airport. No, and, they and, didn't. And the president of the airport. Oh my God. So I had to wait for police to come and the air and the air and the president of the air or CEO of the airport to come. And they and just didn't authorize open the bag us. to look. That's what I said. I'm like, it's, I'm like, you can see the picture. It's wood. I'm all there's, if you look at the side view and they can see the side view, there's no little pee pee hole for any projectile <laughs> to come out and there's rubber bands on it. So they wouldn't oh. remove it from there until the PD got there. So the police department gets there, Burbank PD gets there and they pull the bag through and they look at it. They're like, yeah, it's clearly a toy, but please don't pull these out on the plane. <laughs> so they <laughs> let me keep them and carry them through. And they opened the second line up, so I wasn't really holding up the line for too long, uh, which was nice because I felt really bad, <laughs> you know, because people are freaking waiting behind me. Who knows if they're right. late or not. I mean, they're not late because I know what flights are flying out. There's like three flights <laughs> at any given time, so I know they're not late. And uh, 
yeah, that, so that was uh, that was my uh, my one wonderful story of locking down the airport. A second time, one of my buddies at the prop shop, I told him I, I had this really because so at this prop shop we built spacesuits there, right? right? And one of the suits that we built was not so historically accurate. We built all the uh, stormtrooper costumes for Disneyland and okay. for this company that sells them uh, to people like like if you want to buy your own for five thousand dollars. This Holy company, smokes. yeah, this company would sell these uh, costumes, and they were legit. I mean, down to the 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 best details you can possibly imagine. We built those okay. there, and I said, I have this really legit lightsaber, and one of my buddies like, dude, you should bring it. I'm like, cool, yeah, I'll do that. And it <laughs> the the shaft from it disconnects, and it has a little cap at the end of it. And if you light it up with a, the shaft on it, it sound makes that you know that lightsaber yeah. sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the shaft is disconnected and you light it up, it makes a sound. Like it's shorting out. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, you know where this is going. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going from SeaTac to Burbank, because that's where I'm bringing it from. Uh, uh, there's a, a bunch of security lines there, but if you ever been to SeaTac Airport, it's horrible. It's okay. like one of the worst airports. Period. I mean, you were talking about freaking the the Jacksonville Airport being crazy this one's crazy too so just jacksonville is not horrible detroit's horrible okay detroit's horrible sea tac yeah. is horrible i freaking hate sea tac airport anyway so not for the people the people there are wonderful it's just the lines suck whoever does the the logistics of people getting through the lines is not very good at their job right <laughs> anyway so they I, I pass through the thing the metal detector again and they scan my bag once again and once again i have my lightsaber in my backpack and they they pull it aside this time they don't lock it in there and the, the two guys are freaking at the thing are arguing what the hell this is. They think it's a pipe bomb. <laughs> they think it's some sort of pipe bomb. Okay, I was expecting you to be like taser or something I'm like that. I'm like, it's that's a way lightsaber. Worse. They're like, what's a lightsaber? I'm like, no, everyone like, knows I'm like, what shut a the front door. Is. There's no way you don't know. I'm like, you How could be, old are these guys? They're probably your age. They know what a lightsaber exactly. is. Exactly. That's what I said. I'm like, <laughs> you could be living under a rock. And you know what a lightsaber is. You could hate Star Wars and know it's what a lightsaber yes. is. You know what I mean? 100%. I'm all, stop it. And the guy behind them, he's like, you guys are idiots. It's a freaking lightsaber from the movie Star Wars. Have you never seen? St yeah, we know what Star Wars is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So And they hit the button and it makes that sound and the dude drops it. I'm like, dude, dude. <laughs> Luckily, it was on a rubber mat. It didn't freaking get damaged because it was like I have a right. the, the lightsaber I have. It's like very legit. It's all made out of like machined aluminum and like it's really. Oh, so it's a really it, good one. Yeah, yeah. I paid a, a, yeah, a yeah. fair amount of money for this thing, you know. So I'm like, dude, come on. I wasn't like the cheap plastic ones. And uh, so they the, the dude convinced them to let them let me through with it. They're like, just leave it in your bag. <laughs> I'm like, what's with this? Leave it in your bag, crap. I'm like, dang it. Oh. So that was my two uh, close the lines for security. Uh, SeaTac, I'm sure people were way more pissed because there's, you know, a hundred flights going out and I don't know if any right. of them were late. Someone might've actually been late. Yeah, exactly. So, but that wasn't my fault. I, I legit had a <laughs> toy with me. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't a weapon of any kind, but you've had they, to, twice now you've had toys closed down lines. Toys, so. toys closed down lines. And you know, <laughs> I've seen people get through with box cutters and, but my, you know, my lightsaber, no. <laughs> Your wooden gun. My wooden guns. Yeah, exactly. It's freaking ridiculous. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think one funny. time I had a uh, pocket knife on me, not knowing. Like, it was just like in one of the pockets of the bag I had. Yeah. And they were like, you can't take this with you. It's like, okay, I don't really <laughs> care. They said, you need to either get rid of it or we'll keep it. I was like, keep it then. Oh, no, they wanted me to mail it home. Oh, yeah. Or keep it. I'm like. I've had them do that to me, too. I don't too. care. It's probably like a $4 night. Just keep it. <laughs> Just keep it. You, ha you I have had it. no intention. I didn't even know it was with me. Yeah, you enjoy, okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's freaking ridiculous. I had um I had my, uh because I was building props, uh the drill motors that they had there for the prop makers was yeah. just whatever generic material that they happened to. They, were, uh, they weren't generic. I take that back. They were... um. Milwaukee drills, but I had yeah. a set of Makitas I really liked, and they were small, and they were mine, and I know how the, the you know the sensitivity of them, all that stuff. So I figured I'm going to bring my drills with me uh, to use them for work, and um, I didn't know that you couldn't have the batteries with them, the lithium ion batteries, or were not allowed. Right. Okay. So I was able to keep the drill motors, but I had to ship my batteries to myself, <laughs> and luckily well, be some kind of like a, a size. Lot. What's that? Well, there's going to be a size because, like, aren't all phone batteries lithium? They are, but I, I mean, a phone battery can 
catch fire just as well as a freaking, I mean, it's a small battery. If, if you see my batteries on my, my drills, they're not the big honking like DeWalt batteries. They're like these right. little skinny, like tube things that just click in the bottom. It's only, <laughs> they're only like 12 volts. They're not the big old 18 volt ones, you know? Yeah. So I had to ship those back to me. Luckily, um, Alaska airlines was really, really, really kind. And they slapped one of my, I didn't, cause I didn't have anything checked on. They checked it on for me. Okay. For free. So I didn't have to mail it. So that was really nice. Nice. I, I just had to come up with a box. I ended up going to the food court and asking them if they had any empty boxes for like food materials. And they gave yeah. me this little box for like I had old mayonnaise and but it didn't have any mayonnaise in it that had mayonnaise <laughs> in it, you know? And yeah, yeah. uh um, I, I taped it shut with whatever crap I could ra- randomly come up with through my things in there and called it a day. So I, I got my stuff home okay, but it was still a pain in the butt. Right, no doubt. That was the only time I thought um, I was going to be late. We, so when did COVID happen? That was like 2020. It 2020. Started. Yeah, yeah. So 2021, uh, Pat said, hey, I want to take you guys to uh, Colorado. Oh, for that's years. right. I remember that. So I was like, yeah, that sounds great. So we decided to go to Colorado, right? Yeah. And I'm technically, I work for Pat. Yes. Yes. Am I going on a work trip? No. No, this is, this is a for fun trip paid for by your boss. Yes. So Evelyn and I are going to security and we're going through and Evelyn decides to say, yeah, we're just going to uh, see his boss. Right. <sighs> and that will do you in right there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they brought us into the back security room. Oh, they no. They took us out of security. They brought us into the back room. And then we're sitting there for like half an hour. I'm like, our flight leaves in two hours. Oh, no. <sighs> and then eventually they come out and they say, so you're traveling for work. I'm like, no. I'm traveling for fun. My boss is paying for the trip. Right. Oh, so you're not going to talk about work at all. I'm like, no. Well, we play Minecraft. I mean, Minecraft might come. Oh, sorry. They asked what I did. And they I said, I make Minecraft maps for them. They're like, oh, so you're not going to talk about Minecraft at all. I'm like, it's a video game. So it might come up, but. <laughs> but not in the context you're talking about, homie. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to work. They're like, okay. So then they go back and they talk. Then they need to see my like proof that I actually work for this guy. And then I had to pull what? up like pay stubs and all this kind of crap. I'm like, what? I, I don't know if they're like trying to question me or if they're trying to see if like Pat's doing stuff legally. Like, I don't know what the heck is going on. Oh, if he's paying tariffs and stuff to have you. Yeah. Come... Oh yeah. That sounds, I, I that sounds know. like the shady crap government does. <laughs> <laughs> such a pain in the butt. After about an hour, they're like, okay, fine. You're free to go. It's like, yeah, I'm just, you paid for my ticket. I'm just going skiing, man. Yeah, never never use the boss word. <laughs> yeah, and I, I told Evelyn that never again. But never again. Never actually ended up flying to see Pat again for that reason. But Right. <laughs> That's crazy, uh, dude. That's absolutely yeah, but, nuts. And they just have like complete control over it. You can't. Oh, well, there's nothing you can do. Otherwise. Yeah, there's literally no. nothing you can do about it. You're literally like they have way too much power that they can just do whatever they want. They can hold you. They can. They have. You have zero rights, essentially. Oh, I guess if you to wanted to, you can just be like, yeah, you can, I'm just going to leave. You can just leave, but then, yeah, but then you kind of screw yourself because you're not coming you back at your, that point. Right, you screw yourself. You're now in the system. They have your baggage. Like, there's nothing you can do. Right. No, that's it. You're done. So, yeah. uh, that was that's stressful. That's, that's unfortunate. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I had, had a lot what? of stressful moments with uh, trying to get through customs <laughs> or security. Like, I used to travel for work, right? Yeah. But it never felt like we were doing it legit. What do you mean? So I worked for like an engineering company and they ha- they always had the paperwork, but okay. we were always coached to say that we were going there to um, monitor, what's the word? Monitor and supervise. Okay. But we were going there to do the coding, the programming and all that. Oh, stuff. so they were, they were hiding the tax dollars. <laughs> I think that might be what they yeah. were doing. No, I guarantee that's what they were doing. <laughs> there was like no, we were, there, there is no uh, ambiguity on that one. Dude. <laughs> right. Exactly I mean, we were technically, were we were also teaching the um, American like uh, workers that worked at this factory, how to use the systems that we made for them. So you're training. But we were as making well. them there. So you're tra- you were manufacturing the stuff there, and then you were training as well. well. Yeah, we weren't manufacturing. We were so it was a manufacturer based out of South Carolina that was hired us to code the robot, the robots to actually manufacture everything. Oh, I see. I get it. Okay. Right. So I don't know. It, it always felt weird. So we were coached how to actually get through security and all this kind of stuff, and it was just so stressful. It's like I had all the paperwork, I had everything I needed, but I do not handle like um 
figures of authority well <laughs> at all. <laughs> like I was backed into uh, by another car as a kid and the police came to our house and oh. I did nothing wrong. I was hit by a car, but I was so stressed out. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I have a problem with anybody with any kind of power. Like just you can't deal with it? Yeah, I can't deal with it. I get way too stressed. My blood starts to boil. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't uh, I, I don't I don't mind figures of like authority don't bug me too much. Um It's not so much they bug me, they just scare me. Oh, that definitely don't scare me. But they do <laughs> but they, they there is some some worry sometimes that the the authority can be over the bounds can be overstepped. You know what I mean? Right. And so far they I mean at the airport that one time they were. <laughs> <laughs> they were very much so overstepped. Like at even that just point. crossing the border, like driving across. Even if I'm just going shopping, I get so stressed out. It's like I'm doing nothing wrong. I'm just so scared. Oh wow. So so if a if a um police officer is behind you, do you get stressed when you're driving? Oh, hundred percent. Do you really? Yeah. That's crazy. I but am not like, crazy. I get it. I will I get it. Try not to drive one kilometer over the speed limit. And if I can't if they're following me for too long, I have literally pulled into a driveway before to let them pass and then I back out and just keep driving. <laughs> You're like, No, I'm not getting a freaking ticket from you. Not yeah, a chance. I'm not letting you follow me. I don't know. I don't know if it's because I've seen too much like stuff online of police officers and people of authority like abusing their power i don't oh, know <laughs> yeah that's true huh There's, but, a lot of that happens i mean so. evelyn got pulled over once and because she signaled her intent to get into a lane and they were moving at five kilometers per hour and she slowly pushed into this lane in front of this police officer who sped up to cut her off okay and he pulled her over because she made an unsafe lane change what and then it says i could ticket you for a lot but i'm not going to and then proceeds to say also i could ticket you for eating while driving he said i watched you eat a cracker i'm like that's not against the law it says right like i even pulled up the link to the website it says eating and driving is not illegal it is for us it's not just is it it's not distracted driving here it's um can be considered reckless driving if you do something reckless while driving or like while driving oh i see yeah for us it's uh having having a hand off the wheel because you have to have you're supposed to have both hands on the wheel huh and we're allowed to to have like one hand off. I mean, that's how you turn your radio down. That's how you do right. You're not things in your it. car. Yeah, you're not supposed to do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, they're they're pretty. I mean, they're not strict about it, honestly. But that's what that's the rule. You know what I mean? Okay. I guess it depends on the cop. If if you're uh, if you've got one that's just had a bad day, then you're gonna have a bad day. Right. Absolutely. You know. So. I mean, this cop literally sped out to cut her off, and then decides to. Yeah. Pull exactly. that. So I'm just like, he's just looking for reasons to like pull you over. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, absolutely. He's trying to validate why he pulled you over at this point. Right. Exactly. Justify it. Yeah. Yeah. No BS entirely. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, I need to extend this house. <laughs> like, I have found three villages since we've talked. And oh, sweet. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Right. And I, I found another igloo and it actually had a basement. Dude, that's so and freaking I, cool. I can't wait to watch that video because I have not <laughs> seen a freaking igloo in so long. Well, I put my, uh, I started cooking up some meat while I was like, okay, I'm just going to explore this basement and I'm going to uh, put this meat here. And then we were talking and I left and I kind of forgot about the food I left. So <laughs> there's some random igloo with food in it now. <laughs> it's just gone though. It's You have it's no idea gone. where it's at. No clue. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, this, this uh, village is uh, coming along actually. I have, I have it pretty secured. I think I'm missing a gate somewhere you're fencing in the whole village yeah so i always do that's like i have this ocd thing where i have to fence (laughs) in a village because i want to protect the village from the mobs and uh that way i don't have to trap them in like a trading house thing type of gotcha and they can just be free i've been wanting like i don't want to be in a village i've been trying to like i want to be in a cherry grove i want to find a cherry grove um i don't see one anywhere near me i have a feeling that it's nowhere even remotely close to me (laughs) just not even in the realm of possibility for me Uh, i would i would love to find i mean i haven't i've only seen two so far um not on this map though fair enough all right so evelyn and, and i got married five years ago now yeah 2018 and our honeymoon was in florida oh cool so we go to Florida, and about three days into our five-day vacation, I start getting excruciating tooth pain. What? It's brutal. Oh, and no. I had actually ended up needing to go. To, I went to a dentist while I was there because we did have insurance, but we weren't covered under, like, 100% d- dental. Okay. So it was, like, 30% dental. Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I'll go see a dentist. 
this is excruciating. I can't deal anymore. And it turns out the dental work I had done like a month before our wedding. Yeah. Was done poorly. Like there was still, basically there was a black spot on my tooth. But of course it was. In where the cavity was filled. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. So I ended up having to get a root canal done in Florida. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. That's it was the, the freaking... most painful thing. I hate tooth pain, right? Right. I mean, who, they likes, had to freeze who freaking me. likes tooth pain? Jeez, that's right. freaking rough, man. <laughs> but they had to freeze. They froze it like five times, and I could still feel them drilling into like the root. I have a high tolerance for pain. I will not <laughs> let them inject me with anything. Oh, really? Yeah. For I even had my like wisdom teeth pulled. Um and uh, they weren't impacted or anything, but I, did, I only let them use like that Oral B, like topical crap. Okay. That's it. I won't Dude. let them inject me with anything. I just don't like the way I feel when I'm on it. Everywhere, like anywhere? anytime, anytime, or just oral. Oral. No, no, no. Like for like for surgery, I had to have like this thing in my arm was there for whatever thing it was. Uh, yeah. I, I let them inject me with whatever crap it was. I just don't like the yeah. way the oral makes my head feel. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it it's super weird and numbing feeling, but. Oh, I can't do anything without any kind of anesthesia or freezing. <laughs> I have a very low pain tolerance. Do you? What's freezing? That's what we call it, like freezing. So when they inject your whatever to make it go numb, essentially. Oh, that you call it freezing? Yeah. Interesting. What do you call it? Uh, anesthetic? I guess, I mean, it's kind of anesthetic as well. I guess I consider anesthetic more of a, um, like, put you to sleep. Oh, no, there's, like, a local anesthetic. Right. So that's, I guess that's also the name for it, but uh, freezing is pretty much what everyone what they, calls they it. call it? Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard that, that term, so that's that's new to me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so that was... So, Evelyn has now declared that I'm no longer allowed to vacation to Florida. Uh, that's a fair... You know, that's a I've, fair... That's a fair argument, honestly speaking, <laughs> well, man. Both times I've vacationed to Florida, I've had to have emergency surgery while in Florida. That's a fair argument. I, I'm, I'm going to side with her on this one. And, uh, uh yeah, you've been... Uh, You've been vetoed from ever having uh, any kind of trip to Florida, dude. <laughs> so, Who wants to go to Florida anyways? They're not, pretty whacked right now. <laughs> a little crazy right now. <laughs> I found a freaking mangrove. Or what are they called? What? Cherry. Cherry grove. Oh, you found thing. the cherry grove? I, I have a, so I have the mangroves all around me, like surrounding my, my area, but I don't have it, which I'm bummed. I haven't actually found a mangrove yet, but. Uh. Yeah, the mangrove forest is encompassing my whole entire area around the, around my base. What, it's a very this? small cherry grove, but it'll work. Oh, what is this section? Did I not block this off? <laughs> Oops. There's a section Oops. here that's not blocked off, and uh, villagers are escaping. Oh, no. We don't like it when the villagers escape. <laughs> they, they don't know what's good for them, damn it. They just they just kind of wander around until they get killed. Got lots of uh, travel stories from growing up around Ontario, but who, who gets excited about traveling Ontario, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, I do have one that had nothing to do with, it was also with a car and, uh, we had this Audi Q7, big freaking wheels on it. Uh, I put it on there for Chauncey and we were driving to Vegas to meet up with friends to go on their boat. And we didn't have a boat with us. It was just a car middle of nowhere, uh, in the desert in the, um, California desert. And we blow a tire. Well, I don't know. Two months prior, uh, the car had gone through some renovation through the body shop because of a rodent infestation. It oh, no. had, had eaten up a bunch of stuff in the trunk, like a little rat, oh, not a rat, a, a little mouse, ate up the whole back seat. So we took it to the body shop and they fixed all the stuff that was in the trunk area that was damaged, and including the spare tire, which was something was wrong with the spare. I think they ate through the rubber or something on the spare tire. So they put a new spare tire on it. Well, we go to put the spare tire on the, the Q7. And uh, they forgot the valve stem, not no. the whole valve stem, just the core, the little thing that okay. you push down to make it, you know, to let air in and out. Yeah. They forgot the core. Okay. So we're on the side of the road. We call roadside assistance. We had the uh, Audi roadside assistance, which for whatever reason could not locate us because the <laughs> Audi had that little, you know, that little push button. It's got the little SOS thing, whatever it is. It'll ping the like location. Kind of like OnStar, but they have their own version of it. VW okay, has it too. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, VW has it too. Anyway, so push that little thing. They could not track us because we were in the middle of nowhere. Uh, right. There's no cell towers nearby. We barely had cell service. And we sat there waiting for them to find us because they kept on saying, we're almost there. We're trying to find a tow truck that's available. It was a it was a Saturday morning. It wasn't, wasn't like early in the morning. It was like, you know, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay. So it was, you know, a reasonable hour. And uh, they couldn't find us. And it took them 
six hours to never find us. We ended up flagging. Never and, find you. Yeah, to, we ended up flagging another tow truck down on the side of the. Just happened to be driving by, and he said, "Okay, I can tell you to a tire shop, but it's forty five minutes away in the wrong direction, like in the middle of nowhere." Right. I, I'm gonna shoot. Fine. Okay, we'll we'll go, we'll go with you. And it's going to be 145 bucks for this tow because it's not covered. <laughs> F- fine, whatever. We have no choice. No option. I'm right. Like, Can you help us get a valve? Oh, I don't have any valve stems. Maybe this tire shop has. Some. So we make our way all the way to the tire shop. And the the spare was a full-size spare. It wasn't a uh, like a small spare tire, like the little donuts. It was a full-size 22-inch wheel is what we had on the car with a tw- another 22-inch wheel in the trunk with a full okay. tire on it. They just forgot the stupid valve. Um, <laughs> So we, we make it there, and they put a new valve stem in it. Yeah, no problem. We'll take care of it. They put a new valve stem in it and uh, in the spare tire, right? Not in the new tire. Not in the old tire that's already popped in the new tire. And uh, I turn around to go get my, my credit card to pay them. They were only going to charge me like 20 bucks or whatever it was, which was awesome. They slashed my tire with a freaking knife. On purpose? On purpose. Why? They happen to have, by chance, in this shop, in the middle of freaking nowhere, a used identical tire they were going to charge me full retail for. They slashed my freaking tire so they could charge what? me for another tire because I'm in the in BFE, middle of nowhere. No, they did Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Seriously? Did. Dead serious. There was no the? there was no puncture. There's no nothing. You can see the, the cut line on the sidewall of this brand new freaking tire they're like oh it had a bubble it burst I'm like, i've seen no, a, it didn't. no it didn't i've seen a tire with a bubble <laughs> burst before I, i've had <laughs> I, I, I used to work for a tire shop i know what i'm talking about they're like, and the, the, this wasn't the case they cut it with a freaking box cutter okay so what happened then so i ended up we ended up uh calling what do you call it uh triple a to come pick us up from there and triple a finally found us triple a instead of the roadside assistance from audi triple a came and picked us up drove us all the way back, we were, I think we were three hours out at that point from our house. So we were almost about an hour and a half from Vegas. It drove us back to the house. And so at this point, it had been a total of, I think, seven hours, eight hours. And we ended up going home, un- unloading the car, going to bed, taking a nap in the middle of the day because we were exhausted from this. And ended up taking another car and going back out to Vegas. Well, the Hummer, as a matter of fact. Right, of course, <laughs> the Hummer. Yeah. But this was years before it was... A piece of crap. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> um, so, did you like get money back from the, them slashing the tire? Oh no, 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 no. They they were they were there to just to, to make money from off of us. That was it. There was no. That's ridiculous. That what was, is the name of this company? I, I don't even remember honestly because it was. <laughs> I, I just kind of wanted like go look up Google reviews, see if they've done it to other people. Oh, I, I almost guarantee it. I almost <laughs> guarantee it. That's ridiculous. I know that I know what the city business was in. like that. That's shady. Oh, it was shady. I, I've and I've experienced shady before, but not at this level. Like know, it, right? right in front of your face. Well, I mean, That's almost ridiculous. literally in front of my face. Yeah, it was nuts. I find it so hard to find any kind of trustworthy garage nowadays. I, I have I have a hard time trusting anybody <laughs> anymore. I, you know what I mean? Especially when it comes yeah. to garages. Like when I find somebody that I like, I almost want to stick with them, even if their prices are outrageous. Right. Because they're so, I mean, they're so far and few between. I uh, I guess we're gonna change up a tiny bit here. Yeah. I last a year, a little over a year ago, I went to a garage in London while I was in treatment. So yeah. I need an oil change done, and let me know what else is needed on the vehicle because I try to get an opinion from mechanics. L- L- right. London, Ontario. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just to be clear, went to, not not England. <laughs> um, went to this garage, did the oil change, and they say, yeah, you got uh, coolant leaking here, and you need new brakes before Christmas. Okay. All right. Fine. I didn't do anything with it. I said, give me a quote on brakes and coolant or the part for the coolant thing. They never called me back, never got anything, whatever. I had my own stuff going on. I didn't really. Okay. So not coolant's still fine this year. And there's, I actually went back to a mechanic and they said, your coolant's full. So clearly there's nothing leaking. Oh. And then while well, I was getting an oil change done two weeks ago, uh-huh. they said, yeah, here's a 50% off brake pads. I'm like, oh, great. Could you just let me know if you think I need brakes right now? So they go backs so you do for sure. Fronts, yeah, you should get your brakes done. Okay. All right, fine. So they, they gave me a quote, $1,200 to do pads and rotors. Wow. This is Canadian dollars, so it's like that's $950 U- US. US. Okay. That's ridiculous to me. I am pretty certain that I just did my Mazda like five years ago. I guess five years ago is a long time with this inflation. Yeah. But I did pads, rotors, and calipers for 800 bucks. Oh, okay. 
So to go an extra four hundred dollars without getting calipers seems ridiculous to me. It seems like a lot. So I'm like, okay, how hard is do break yourself? So I look at YouTube videos. I'm like, yeah, I can do this. So I buy the tools myself for like three hundred bucks. Yeah. And then I go buy pads. I'm like, I look at the rotors and they're brand new on the front, and the pad the backs are fine. They're not rusted. They're not warped. They're oh. not scratched or anything. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do pads. Okay. Bought pads for one hundred and twenty bucks. Okay. And that was it. That's it. The awesome. job. Took the backs off. The backs had about an eighth of an inch of pad left on it. So like, okay, maybe, yeah, those probably needed to get done. The fronts, or look at the fronts. Still a little over half an inch of pad on the fronts. So they're brand new almost. Yeah. I look at, I compare them to my new, brand new pads I just bought. And there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch thinner. Oh, wow. Are you serious right now? I've had two mechanics now try to take advantage of me and tell me I need to buy new brakes. Like... That's crazy. So I did my backs because I was like, they needed to get done, but I just left my fronts as is. But it's good. Well, yeah, no, I know. I hate doing work that doesn't need to be done. It's just absolutely such a, <laughs> such an utter waste of money. Yeah, and, 100%. And then when somebody tries to take advantage of you, it just makes it that much freaking worse. And just, yeah, it's just like, it hurts you. It's like, why do you, you can't trust anybody? No, that's the problem is that, that makes everybody untrustworthy. Like now I'll go to, like, I'll try to find a trustworthy mechanic. I don't know if I can trust them now. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, do I actually uh, trust you or think I trust you or should I even bother? Just assume right. that you're lying to me at this point. But I was just so shocked that, I mean, even just parts themselves, they wanted, I, I did the math myself and rotors were 50 bucks a piece. So I had four rotors, that'd be 200 bucks. And I paid 120 bucks for pads, $320 in parts that I bought from a source paid retail price. Right. Right. So you're telling me that it was over eight hundred dollars in labor, two hour job. They says it. They said it's a two hour job. No, because that's four hundred dollars. That's four hundred dollars an uh, an hour. That doesn't make any right. sense. Most most garages on gen in general, uh, here at least here in Southern California, between anywhere between one hundred and twenty five hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Right. It's yeah, usually so they pretty said standard. Is one twenty an hour? Okay. Which is cheaper than U.S. It's cheaper than U.S. That's like 90 bucks an hour here, right? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what that's, they used to be. Like, I used to pay 80 bucks an hour. So, for... at 90 bucks an hour for the extra $800. I mean, they must be charging, like, are they getting, like, VW OEM parts for your car? Right. And are they upcharging? Like, are they putting 200% the cost of them just to source them themselves? They always that do that. Seems... They always do that. So, they always double, double the cost <laughs> of materials. So, even we used to do that for, like, when we did a t-shirt printing. Yeah. Uh, we would double the cost of of the um of the shirt because that way if we messed it up we can cover the cost of the shirt again. It's like okay. Cover your butt right. scenario, but for material that's that expensive, that seems outrageous. But then that's one thing too. Like maybe that doesn't work for a t-shirt business or whatever. But if I wanted to supply my own parts, then they don't warranty them. They don't warranty them, but they should still do it. I call. They'll do it. You know, they will places. do it. Almost no all places will do it. it. Really. They said they had to supply the parts. That's shady. Because it's like, as why? Far... If I buy the parts, then it's my warranty. Like Right, exactly. I mean, every shop out here that I know of will do the work. Their only um, stipulation is we won't cover the work. And right. that's fair. That's fair. I, they don't cover the materials. Sorry. They'll cover their work. They won't cover the materials. And I get it because they didn't freaking buy the materials. So there's they don't know where I got it from or anything along those lines. And I understand if they're not going to cover it. But at least they'll do the freaking work. Where yours is like, <laughs> they're like, nope, we're not gonna do it at all. Yeah, it's crazy. And I should stipulate, I, I, I didn't get cheap parts for 120 bucks. Like, I didn't get the most expensive ones you could get. No, but you but bought there were the... one. There were pads I could have got for 50 or 80 bucks. I think I quoted three different ones. It was a 50 dollar option for four pads, 80 dollars and 120. I went with 120 dollar parts. Like when it comes to brakes, I don't get cheap stuff because I did that once with my Mazda. Yeah, and it didn't end well. Oh, I bet. I mean, it's yeah. it's never a, never a, g a good way to go to cheap out on safety, <laughs> <laughs> on safety aspects it, it, of your vehicle. It wasn't necessarily unsafe, but like after a month of driving it, all of a sudden the brakes were warped again and were crap. So it's just like, yeah, I don't get cheap brakes anymore because it's just more of a headache. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to mention that when you brought <laughs> up your automobile problems. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's it's crazy out there to, to find somebody that you could trust. And find out that there isn't very many. There aren't very many places that you can trust. Body shops. Wish you had like a 
mechanic friend. <laughs> I, I know that's when like mechanic friends come in super freaking handy. But then you feel bad or guilty about asking them for anything because they're like, "It's my time off. Leave me alone." Well, it's not, I, I would still pay them. Like I do. Oh yeah, I for sure. Their I, shop. I would rather. I just want their trustworthy opinion. Exactly. Like, they're not gonna. Right. The the problem right. with a lot of mechanic friends that I have is anytime you ask them for something, they assume you're asking for a deal. Right. And that's not always the case. Even if I had a friend who could just be like who knew what they were doing and they could just look at things and be like, yeah, this is what needs to get done. Yeah. Even if they didn't want to work on it themselves, oh, yeah. at least I had someone trustworthy who could tell me. Yeah. No, I mean, so luckily fortunate enough, I was, I've been fortunate enough to, cause I not, didn't grow up around cars, but when I was in high school and thereafter, I got into cars like pretty uh, heavily. I was in a yeah. car club and we built cars, we gutted cars like down to the frame so we can have them all painted and everything. And then, uh, you know, I've, I've done, I worked at a body shop before, worked at a tire shop before, and I know how to disassemble an entire engine and reassemble an entire engine. So I can get to most things, but on newer, newer cars with the computer systems and everything else that's involved, it's yeah. a lot different than it used to be. Even though I can, I mean, I can figure out a vacuum leak or something like that. It's not hard. Oh, well, that's not hard. No, it's not. It really isn't to, to figure <laughs> out a vacuum leak uh, to, on a vehicle to, if that's the problem, especially on something that's like turbocharged like yours. Um, right if you know a car runs limp limp meaning like the turbo doesn't spool up and it runs at super boggy speeds i I know how to figure figure that out i can tell you if the turbo is bad or if you know a vacuum leak is the issue so do you work on motorcycles it's the same difference all right i should bring you here (laughs) (laughs) motorcycles Uh, are a lot easier than cars (laughs) i figured that much out so far yeah uh, Anyways, I think we're going to leave it here. Um, I have yeah. secured my entire base. I'm super excited through this entire chat here. Um, uh, my my iron golems are trapped outside my base, so I'm going to have to figure out how to wrangle them in. They are the hardest thing to move. They just don't move. You they have to don't. hit them and let them chase you. Yeah, I guess you do. And then just look at, <laughs> how long does it take for them to forget about you? I don't know if they ever do. Maybe when you <laughs> log off and log back on. Maybe if I just en- empty all my freaking uh, inventory... Smack let one, let them kill, put the blocks down and lock them into place and then let them kill me. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'll, I'll probably have there to do go. that. I'll have to do That's that. That's how you do it. Yeah, I'll have to do that. Anyways, like I said, I think we're going to leave it here. I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, little chat of travel around the world or at least here in, on our side of the world. Um, I sure did. I love chatting with you, Lucas. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. For those of you that are unaware, which is probably everybody that's ever watched any either one of these videos, so we decided together a few years ago to put together another channel called Game Wave, which is gameplay videos of other game types, not Minecraft. Because we have that, that combined channel, we decided that we're going to take the audio from these videos and convert it into a podcast. So we have what is now called Game Wave the Podcast, and it's available on all your podcast streaming services uh, from Spotify to Apple Play, Google, all that good stuff. Uh, whatever, whatever your heart's content, you can find us uh, if you search up Game Wave, uh, Game Wave the Podcast, or just Game Wave. Uh, we'll be on there, uh, or I'll put links in the description of both of our videos uh, down below. And if you guys have any suggestions for any future topics, do let us know down in the comment section below. But we'll see you guys in the next video. And most importantly, don't forget to have a lovely day. Bye, guys. See ya.